So it is uh, 6 p.m. I'd like to open up the meeting. Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? None for me. Okay, I have just a couple. Um, I should have probably put in a couple updates, but I thought we'd just check in about the, um, the rail trail committee, and then um, I have a little bit of an update on the um, the village stormwater master plan of the final designs. Okay. Rail trail committee meeting got canceled for okay. that night, and they haven't rescheduled yet. Okay, all right. Um, any public comment? Up to you, Lee. <laughs> so I, I do want to uh, just briefly mention that this probably should have been part of the adjustments to the agenda too. That um, Randy is out on a family leave emergency, um, so there will no be there won't be any town treasurer's report tonight. Um, uh, Paul Cerruti is finishing up from a, num a couple of uh, fire department calls uh, this afternoon. Um, he will probably be here later, um, but we're going to start the meeting without him. Um, so, um, I would make a motion that we approve the bills to the town. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for the February 10th, uh, 2020 select board meeting. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, um, and here's a copy of the sign. Signed. Um, the next item on our agenda is a nuisance animal issue and also just a, a quick look and discussion about uh, the town's um, domestic pet nuisance control ordinance. So, um, I think I'm pretty sure I sent you. I read the um, what the, the VLC. town and uh, city town town city league whatever the well league of cities and towns yeah yeah uh -huh. okay. and I uh, disagree with her as assessment okay and um, wh what do you do you disagree with a part well, where she said that we should follow our ordinance or well here's the thing okay our ordinance doesn't cover running at large. Uh, there is thing about nuisance uh, as far as the animal going on uh, somebody else's property, but um, there's nothing that really covers being a nuisance as far as uh, public right-of-ways, public areas, public mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, do, it does say, you know, repeat, habitually or repeatedly leaves its owner's property. Owner's property, but again, it, it doesn't go into. However, there is a state ordinance that talks about, and that's what I was trying to find at the moment, right. and a uh, thing up that talks about dogs running at large. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is a state ordinance about it that says that the dog either has to be on a leash or under the owner's control. I.e. referring to working dogs. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's that, and the the second part I disagree with her is <clears throat> unless she had the wrong reference, um, where she said the animal control officer cannot request a hearing. Well, I'm not requesting a hearing. I was asked what would be the next step. The mm -hmm. town, on their own, as outlined in the states statute can impose restrictions on a dog owner. Mm -hmm. It's not me going to the town saying, hey, you know, this is, you know, this, this is everything I've done. It's in your ballpark now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you as a select board can have a uh, quasi moto quasi whatever you call Judicial. it, <laughs> uh, <laughs> hearing. Yeah. Yeah, um, and that spells out how you would go about having a hearing. Okay. Well, it was yeah. I think you know as far as the hearing that she mentioned, I think that was was my understanding that you were requesting. No, a I was so that, asked. I you know, by uh, employees of the town of Woodbury. You know, 
about knowing about this ongoing issue, and they said, well, what's the next step? Well, I said, the next step would be for the select board to mm -hmm. conduct a hearing. Mm -hmm. And she said, how do we go about that? Well, put it on the select board's agenda. Right, okay. Um, yeah, and according to what uh, the lawyer from VLCT stated, is that the the only, you know, there's is state statute about having a hearing process for a vicious dog, um, but not for a nuisance dog. But right. there, you, the state statute covers dogs running at large. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right, and you, were you able to find that? No, I'll, okay. I'm going to take this uh, to work with me tonight. Okay. And I will find the specific... Um, Subchapter and all that that talks about dogs running at large. Okay, all right. So um, maybe just for the public record, can you kind of review what you have done with this dog owner and, and dog? What, just the, some of the steps that you've taken. Um, this particular dog owner came to my attention several years ago um, mm -hmm. for not registering a dog and not having uh, a. Uh, rabies certificate. Mm -hmm. um, over the course of several years of going to his house and warning him and telling him the steps that he needs to take in order mm -hmm. to get his dog vaccinated in accordance with state statute mm -hmm. and registering his dog, um, eventually about two years later and several uh, times of going to his house and picking his dogs up mm -hmm. from different people. Mm -hmm. um, he finally got the dog registered and then things were quiet for a while and then I started getting complaints about um, his uh, Great Pyramid um, running around, getting mm -hmm. into the road, getting into the traffic. Mm -hmm. um, I stopped at the owner house and spoke with his wife and informed her that you know she needs to keep the dog on their property mm -hmm. or has to have it on lease or in the voice commands mm -hmm. you know and uh, I continued to get uh, calls um, from them and I made two stops left them notices on their doors mm -hmm. about their dog running at large mm -hmm. and um, what a problem is uh, causing on uh, Route 14 mm -hmm. and I've left my phone number with them they failed to um, call me mm -hmm. and uh, I haven't been able to actually speak face to face with them for what two months now three mm -hmm. months now mm -hmm. um, okay. the last thing I heard is with this incident out here where mm -hmm. it's involved the state police you mm -hmm. know that was after I had left two notices mm -hmm. um, so what happened with the state police well sheriff. the sheriff mm -hmm. so or they Washington, got a call or Washington County Sheriff mm -hmm. yeah sure Did the no, sheriff he come was out? here he was here patrolling and the dog was in the yard somebody had taken the dog out of the middle of the road and lured it in treats out to the front of the building yeah. so the sheriff helped the woman get the dog into the building here and then Brandy made contact with the brother-in-law. Oh, but he, he, he was out in the road and on Route 14 and a woman stopped at yeah. 10.30 in the morning. And sure. the sheriff went down and put a note on the door uh -huh. and Do you have a car. rough idea what day that was? It was in between this meeting and the last, I think it was maybe the day of the last meeting actually, right around February oh, 10th, okay. right. right around then. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll call the sheriff's department and see what they if they wrote something up. Or something up, yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So you know, the ordinance um, pretty much just states you know what the notice of violation. It doesn't have really anything um, of what to do once that's been. Yeah, but you've never you've never find them or anything like that. Um, well, we've gone we've gone down that route before. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. This sounds like you've given them plenty of written warnings. There have been plenty of warnings in the VLTC um, letter. They said talked about fines and small claims court. Mm -hmm. 
I've had uh, discussions with the select board about that yeah. when I first took on this job, and I remember the, some of those discussions. The select board doesn't have any mechanism in place for uh, recouping fines. You know, mm -hmm. you know, you can write a fine out to a person. There's, there's not very much to it, you know. But it, it, there isn't any really substance to it. Right. All it was was a piece of paper, you know, that says you're being fined is such such yeah. amount of number, uh, you know, and Does you pay the town clerk. Ticket book or anything like that. Well, that's that's, 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 di that's, that's different. different. That's different. Yeah. different. That's okay. the next. Kim that, has a ticket. That's book. another okay. step. Yeah. Um, but the town has the right to fine people, mm -hmm. but the town also has to collect it. And if they can't collect it, then they, you know, they can they can go to small claims court. Right. But this board has never wanted to, to go down that avenue or pursue it. So we went down the route with uh, pursuing um, magistrate court. Uh, the state, the state has books to write in tickets, but there's a certain amount of information that you have to put on it which I am not privy to, and right. most of the time, the person I'm confronting isn't going to give me the information. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, huh. And we've had state police here, and you know, they can't share information with us, you know, so that whole ticket book is right. kind of a, a iffy thing. Mm -hmm. I'm sure something else that we could adopt. Does VLCD have any other models? They, that make it they, sent, uh, they, they, they sent us a model ordinance, which um, you know we could we could take a look at this and um, if it would make it easier for us to deal with them, I right. guess. Yeah. I haven't had the time to really go through those, but um, yeah, there are different um, steps and procedures um, in here um, that we could that we could um, incorporate into the ordinance. Um, I'm remembering that you and Skip Lindsay worked on this ordinance. Yeah, did that did. ever did that ever get? I don't think that ever got completed. Um, I thought this was the updated version of it. No, it isn't. Okay. No. Um, we worked on it. We worked on some some fine things, and we uh, worked on fine tuning it. Mm -hmm. um, one of the problems is running at large. You know, the state gives a definition of what that is. Right. But the town um, has always been leery of at least law. Yeah. Because yeah. We're, we're in the country. In the country. Yep. And, you know, you got, you know, we haven't had a lot of uh, people hunting with beagles in the last 20 years or so, but uh, for a while, you know, people were hunting with beagles and coon dogs and things like that, you know. Yeah. And, Yeah, I mean, we up in the village here, we have a few dogs that wander through the neighborhood. And, and yeah, Ben and Levy's dog is a race regular visitor yeah. up and down through there. Yeah, and yeah, there, yeah there's yeah. a few and dogs. I don't, I mean, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and for the most part, most of the dogs, if left alone, go back to their right. yeah. their, their owners, you know. Yeah. And like I said, we are a rural area, you know, people are not inclined to hook their dogs out. Yeah. 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 Which is fine as long as the dog isn't creating a problem but right. or a nuisance. But yeah. if the dog is causing a nuisance or public uh, safety issue, i.e. wandering into Route 14. Yeah. Yeah, that was another bottle of wax altogether there. Yeah. And that he, is a danger to you know, the public. He, yeah. yeah, he lives, you know, living on Route 14 has some inherent yeah. problems, right. you know, yeah. especially when you own a big dog, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, in the middle of the winter, this winter, I forget what day it was, I may have it written down because I got a call from Brandy about it, about the dog in room 14 just barely mi being missed by um, two cars, which almost caused like a four car, five car mm -hmm. pack, I mean, you know, jam up because... Uh, mm -hmm. You know, people going Probably north, people way. going south, the dog right. shot out there, people slammed mm -hmm. on the brakes, and mm -hmm. vehicles went every which way. Yeah, yeah. So, um, 
How what, what, how do you feel we should proceed here? What I mean? Well, we, we can look at the ordinance again, you know, as mm -hmm. far as cleaning it up. But like I said before, the statute gives the select board the authority to hold a hearing if okay. a individual is not being in compliance. Okay. So if, if you could find that statute mm -hmm. for us, um, and, and then just you know email or phone and give me the the number so I can find it, mm -hmm. that'll give us a sense of how you know what the next step would be in, in this particular case, um, and you know whether it's just having a um, yeah maybe a, a letter to them from the select board right. instead of the animal control officer right. outlining. Mm -hmm. what's going to happen next if yeah. this keeps happening. And maybe the statute has a sense of steps that can be taken um, to, you know, to proceed The state on statute covers the definition running at large, okay? Yeah. And mm -hmm. then in a separate area down, I mean, when you're talking about rabies and registering the dogs and this and that, it talks about the the uh, legal mm -hmm. uh, options that okay. they, the, the town has mm -hmm. and that spells out you know mm -hmm. uh, given the uh, the person notice and mm -hmm. setting the day you know mm -hmm. you know just okay. like you guys done in the past right. Right. can I also mention the when the sheriff was here I had a short discussion with him about issuing fines mm -hmm. and he made it sound like it was the same as a like if they were to issue a fine, it mm -hmm. could be, it could result in loss of license if they don't pay. Mm -hmm. It could be um, taken from their taxes, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. If you issue it correctly and go through the right steps, I'm not sure what they are, mm -hmm. but it's this, along the same line. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it might be worth asking them about the process to do that. Yeah, maybe you know just calling the sheriff's department. Could they mm -hmm. issue tickets for us? Sounds like they probably could. Well, they probably could, but for the most part, they don't get involved with animal. Okay. Right. Although they did that one time. Of course, yeah. it was on Route 14. Right, and he happened to be in there. Yeah. 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 But I, I have contacted them on a couple of different occasions about different things, animal mm -hmm. control. And uh, even... Um, Dangerous building, you know, yeah. that whole thing there, you know, was mm -hmm. cumbersome. Yeah. Uh, and they, they didn't want Most of the time I deal directly with the state police, you know, yeah. when yeah. it comes to animal control officers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because most of the stuff that we're trying to enforce is state statute anyways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can do a little research too if you'd like. Sure, I sure. Contact them and see. Yeah. So, um, so let's figure out, we'll get the state statute, we'll do, I'll check in with the sheriff's department, we'll kind of figure out um, what the town can do legally to proceed on, on this. Well, I think that would be more a VLT, see, um, and you would, you know. Well, yeah, I want to check in with the sheriff's department to see if they would be, if the dog was, you know, on Route 14, um, if they would be willing or think that they could write a ticket. But I would check, I'll check in again with VLCT. When I spoke with the person from VLCT, they said that, you know, without things stated in your ordinance, it's hard to, um, uh, and, you know, the enforcement comes from the ordinance. So, um, you know, and our ordinance really doesn't mention anything about, um, you know, it doesn't mention anything about impounding dogs, so that's probably, something in state well, statute and, and maybe you know it probably should be in our ordinance also um, or at least a reference to the state statute. There is uh, a you know, state statute about impounding dogs yeah. uh, for various reasons mm -hmm. and there uh, in section 7 it talks about notice of violations and um, section 7 a I um, to, uh, one, two, three. Uh, the problem is, is 
you, you, the select board, or we, the town, does not have a mechanism of collecting fines, and if the person refuses to pay the fine, um, you know, you haven't wanted to go to mall, spa, claim court, or to uh, right. Yeah, usually sub it's subtract uh, the money they give you for property taxes to pay the fines. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, those are all steps you, as a town, or us as the town, can take. But we mm -hmm. we've never gone that down that road. Mm -hmm. When I first took over the thing, you know, one of the things they gave me was those little books with these little sheets of paper, you know, right. to, to write fines out on. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, yeah, I can see where this would go very far. And yeah, no, I remember you talking, to, talking about your frustrations with that. Yeah, and talking with the two prior animal control officers, you know. They uh, reiterated the same thing I was feeling, you know, that mm -hmm. you could fill out this paper, you could hand it to the owner, but there's not any mechanism for actually collecting it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's something else I guess we should probably look into. But, and, and you basically just... Well, I don't know if it needs to be in this particular ordinance, but it has to be somewhere in your right. charter or whatever about... Yeah, well, it should be in the ordinance. Okay. okay. Um, and you've you've basically just given them a long list or quite a few warnings, you know, with your different you know, notices. The, as far as this owner and this owner's responsibility sounds like for his a, dog, it's been an ongoing issue. Right. Like I said, you're, we're going back five years. You know, it mm -hmm. started out with not registering a dog and um, yeah. not having a rabies certificate, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I finally, you know, got that portion done, but as, as far as his dog um, running around loose, running mm -hmm. at large, you know, you, you get into the problem of um, proof of birth, burning up proof. Okay, if somebody calls me up and says, you know, so-and-so dog was, you know, blah, blah, blah. By the time I get the message, you get there, you know, the problem's already taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, issuing a ticket, again, if it ever went to court, it becomes the burden of proof, mm -hmm. you know. Well, did I actually see it? No. So I need a witness, mm -hmm. you know. Most people... <laughs> won't Don't go. Yeah. won't go to court. Um, most of them won't even bother to write a statement, you mm -hmm. know, about mm -hmm. an, an ongoing issue. So you know, it's my word based on hearsay, which is not going to be inadmissible in the right. court of law. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I guess what we'll do is we'll kind of. Check in with the sheriff's department. I'll check in with VLCT again. Um, I'll, I'm, like I said, I'm going to yeah, take that. If you could find on. me this, just get me at the where it is, and I can, you know, kind of study it and figure out. Um, and then, you know, I, I think probably what the select board will do is is just write a letter uh, yeah. to just the owner and just tell them, you know, this is kind of we've been hearing, you know, there have been a series of warnings and complaints for a number of years now, and the fact that the dog is is becoming, um, you know, kind of a hazard on Route 14, um, that, you know, it should either be leashed or kept on its own property, um, and then, you know, it will have, have kind of figured out what the next step would be if that isn't adhered to. Um, Could you add something into that saying that, you know, if this dog got into traffic and created an accident, it could be on him? Because it would it be, could, right? It could be on the owner's responsibility. Yeah, yeah that could the cost dog him. Running at mm -hmm. large. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, it, yeah, there's a lot of responsibility when you, mm -hmm. especially a big dog like that. Yeah. And, and maybe we'll do some work on this ordinance. Okay. okay. I'll see, um, I'll, I know that Skip, um, 
gave me a flash drive with all all sorts of different things that he had oh, really? collected on his computer, and there may be the revisions that uh, you and he worked on are, are mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, VLCT also issues a whole book on dog laws. I have, yeah, they sent that to me. It's called The Dog of Wolf. The book of, I read the whole <laughs> thing front to back. Yeah, 82 pages. Yes. And they also sent me a model. Um, oh, yeah. The dog control ordinance. Yeah, yeah that so, you know, they've had that out there for years. For a long time, yeah. And yeah, so the town hasn't wanted to adopt their template, the boilerplate they wanted to mm -hmm. try to. Yeah. Does yeah. theirs have more meat in it than ours does? Or? There's a little bit more to it. Yeah, I haven't really looked to see yeah. what the difference is, but it would matter or not. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay. So I'll. Uh, so find find that um, the state statute for me. Just shoot me an email or leave a phone message, and I'll look at that. And um, I'll look at this model ordinance. Um, talk to the sheriff's department about this last particular incident, um, and um, and check in with VLCT about you know, a way to proceed with this particular instance. There's a case study or a case. Uh, coming out of Rutland back about seven years ago mm -hmm. where the select board uh, mandated to the owner uh, certain confinements of their animal. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a few case studies okay. you know, in which uh, the select board has taken uh, steps to mm -hmm. uh, require owners to um, confine their animal, okay. mm -hmm. dog in particular, yeah. to their property. Yeah. And that failure to do so would be in seizure of the dog or mm -hmm. disposal of it in accordance with mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. So there are a few case studies. Okay. Right. The whole thing about that is it gets tough to prove that, you know, some so and so saw the dog. In the road, yeah, you, know, you gotta yeah. be there. So yeah, yeah, it, it's still the yeah. big burden of proof on the town. Oh yeah, to oh, do yeah. stuff. But yeah. yeah, well, we do have a sheriff that was involved with one instance. There's a sheriff. We've also helps. got posts all over the, the very page from really? the yeah. last few months of people, you know, seeing that dog in the road, and yeah. probably at least four or five different people. Yeah, yeah. Every time I've gone to the owner's house, the dog has been out mm -hmm. roaming around. Mm -hmm. um, not in the pan with the sheep. Okay. I, say, I haven't seen it out there lately. Yeah. Um, well, just because you don't see him doesn't mean he's not yeah. there. I've gone by a couple times, haven't seen him, and I've stopped and blends in. Little, little little hole, he, here he comes. <laughs> you know, he pops up. You know. Okay. Like I said, uh, I've knocked on the door every time. So they don't want to answer. Yeah. They don't answer. I don't. You know. Yeah. I'm not sure, sure she works. I don't know. Obviously, Harris is working out. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll, okay. we'll see where it goes. All right, I'll, okay. I'll do my part. I'll keep part. you posted. All right, I'll yeah. do my part and okay, great. email you. All right, thanks, Kim. Yep, have a good night. Yeah, yeah. good night, Kim. Yeah. Okay. So we started working on this back in 2011. So yeah, yeah. They yes. just keep coming around and around. Yep, never goes away. <laughs> So, Diana, are you set to come in? We, we, can, we can do some other things. I haven't prepared anything. Okay. I should keep having me. Okay, no. All right, I have one little question for you. I think I sent you, I forwarded the email that that question was about. Yeah, that thing about the table at the town meeting. Well, it's really tough. You know, people, we have a certain number of chairs that they set up. And um, in one corner we have voting, we never have enough room. Uh -huh. People complain that there's no privacy in the voting group that we set up. Mm -hmm. And then you got the kitchen in the other corner. And then mm -hmm. up in the first corner you have the check-in people, and Laura's going to be doing um, dog licenses. Mm -hmm. And... So one year somebody, you know, like the Conservation Commission and the library tried to set up things on one of the tables, but then people sit right down there at the same tables, mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
Could the person share half a table with Laura? No, with no. It's just a little table. Oh, okay, I thought it was. Like yeah. Oh God, no. Oh, okay. That's a, that's the problem. Is those big cafeteria tables take up so much room? Right. But people, even one year we didn't set them up, and people still drag them down, oh. anyways, because people yeah. like to use them and. Yeah. They spread out, so you know. Well, I could just tell the person here because of the voting and stuff. There really is it's limited space. Information that they'd like to have, but it's not going to be a table. You know, we could put it on one of the tables, but okay. yeah. whether it will be that's the kind of thing they want, or if they have. Okay, I could find out yeah. how much space they yeah. want. Yeah. Because one year Jane Sounds was like going to bring a, a bunch of stuff. Hmm? Sounds like there might be a person with you. Mm, yeah, that's too bad not to have that. Mm -hmm. Because that would be nice. But one year Jane wanted to bring a stuff, bunch of stuff from Solid Waste Solid District. Waste district yeah. But yeah. that didn't work out either. Okay. Well, I can just, I'll just tell the tell person. Get, you know, there are tables, but people are going to be sitting on them. Right. So. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta get there early. <laughs> <Their space. laughs> so she did want to come and mm -hmm. wanted to claim a space. She just would have mm -hmm. to deal with the folks that sit in the back. Yeah, and I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't encourage anyone to think that. I mean, we can't have people talking to each other during the meeting either. Right. You know, we can't have somebody. I mean, she'll be quiet if she does dog license. That doesn't involve much talking. Yeah. But between the voting and what's going on, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's not much opportunity for chatting. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's, of course, everybody leaves so soon after the meeting's done. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'll let her know what mm -hmm. she's in for, and she can choose whether or not she wants okay. to come. Okay. One, year, one year, the, the um, Girl Scouts actually set up their cookies down in the foyer. Uh -huh. People could stop and talk mm -hmm. there, but mm -hmm. it would be kind of boring sitting down yep. there. But. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. Okay, so oh, this week I'm trying to line up ballot clerks and get everything ready. Laura's going to take some extra time with me on Monday afternoon to drag our stuff up mm -hmm. to the room and I've got to get make sure that I can get in. Mm -hmm. They told me that the old keys that I have still work, but they've got mm -hmm. a whole new setup there. Right. Yeah. When you go in, I haven't been in either. I haven't so been sure. in, so yeah. Yeah. I gotta it's, make sure that people true. can get in and that yeah. there's a way to prop the door open. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna have to also make. You know, I just realized that the schools close this week. Right. I still am not sure about that sound system. You asked about that, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'm pretty sure they have a new one. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't think it was there mm -hmm. last year. We had Robin Grant bring in. Yeah. A lot of stuff. Do you have Craig Wilson's contact information? I could uh, send that to you. Yeah, that'd probably be good. He's the principal and yeah. oh, Don Don Wilbur? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don Turgeon was probably mm -hmm. there working in the building. Yeah, he probably is around. Yeah. So um, Yeah, he mm -hmm. should if it's there, Don he should know yeah. where it is mm -hmm. and maybe help set it up. Mm -hmm. I mean I think yeah, it's probably just sitting there on the edge of the stage. Probably right on the stage somewhere. I don't know yeah. if they put it away. When it's yeah. not being used, that would be smart, but I right. bet they don't. Because mm -hmm. the speakers are up, up there on yeah. the wall yeah. already. No one weren't there last year, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Is Donnie and the boys set up the tables and chairs around there, or do we yeah, go Donnie do knows that? how to do that. Basically. Yeah, so I'm sure he's done that plenty of times with Larry. He said that's yeah. okay, and John, who also works at the school, is going to be helping him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I could send you mm -hmm. Craig's... Email. I think okay. I have his phone number too. Uh -huh. Of course, it's the school phone number, but mm -hmm. he may be there. Mm -hmm. may, may not be. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can find him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so Thursday me. night, I'm going to start to do another front porch forum. I For think that, when I yeah. sent out a list of meetings last week, I think I forgot to mention the, the you did, Thursday yeah. night you did free forget. town meeting forum. So. I was going to send you a thing. Oh. <laughs> but then I figured you were used to do it a separate time. No, I just forgot. Yeah. Uh, so, so pre-town meeting, town hall, library, library, school, library. library. Six thirty. And whether or not Brandy's available, the library is open. So right. Brett or Sarah will be there. Yeah. yeah. The door will be open. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And is Steve Freihofter going to come and kind of 
and see the. Okay. Yeah, it was Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 Mm. Yeah, town meeting next week. Yeah, I forget to. I forget last week or last meeting. I wasn't aware, but we did get a chunk of our FEMA money. We did get everything oh. we applied for the first round, which was mm -hmm. the building. Finding the building, all the little stuff, the studies and the advertisements and and uh, the appraisal and mm -hmm. the deposit thirty something thousand that we had given early and I didn't bill for the rest of the contract because I was waiting for those two things that have to be approved by FEMA right. and they haven't yeah. been approved yet. But at yeah. least we did get the mm -hmm. seventy thousand dollars. Okay, so we got a chunk of it. Yeah. Yep. Good. They go right back into the general fund, or what is that? Mm, yep. yep. Well, you know, we set it up. I was hoping everything would go through the special fund, but I don't think she has it that way. Yeah. Yeah. The money that was approved by the voters, there was the first chunk that was 30, I think, mm -hmm. and then the second chunk last year was 14,000. That all went into that reserve fund, yeah. and she spent that down when she spent the, who paid those bills. Yeah. Right. Pays a contractor in December, and used part of the uh, line of credit. Yeah, yeah. So probably we'll go back into the general fund. Yeah, I think she's using. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're only, you know, three, four thousand dollars different from mm -hmm. what we had available. So mm -hmm. that's not too bad. Yeah, no. uh, that's, that's just a couple of tow jobs. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. 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 You can find that somewhere. Yeah, we'll find mm -hmm. it somewhere. Yeah. We'll have a big sale. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. um, I can't think of anything else. That I'm trying to think of other town meeting things. Um, Did these get signed? They, uh, well, we're waiting for Paul. Well, okay. I mean, a quorum of the select board has signed. Yeah. So yeah. we're good. By the end of the meeting, yeah. Cause yeah. I, if Paul doesn't. Yeah, he may it. not make it by the time we're done. Yeah. <laughs> You're rushing right through, huh? Yeah. He's, uh, yeah, he left the checks in the drawer. I just have to stamp them and okay. put them in the mail if they're all, when they're all approved. All right, okay. Now we have this voting, um, the accessible voting mess, which is this big thing that I have to somehow get in my car. Mm -hmm. Look, get my Lord, do that. <laughs> anyway, Skip Marcassani is coming in tomorrow to yeah. have, figure it out. Every year, okay. now last year we... I think I took it out for one election and set it up. Nobody used it. Um, anybody can use it, but it's really for people who either can't see or can't hear mm -hmm. or have other disabilities. It's mm -hmm. all this complicated, crazy stuff. Expensive. Mm -hmm. They gave us a whole new printer this year mm -hmm. to go with the thing itself, which is, comes in a whole metal suitcase mm -hmm. kind of thing to carry oh. around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anyways, thank goodness for Skip. He's been such a such a help lately. Yeah, he's been kind of fixing. Yeah. Things here and there. Before you know, we all have new computers and <laughs> yeah. got a new printer here. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. So and is that something that the town? That's the town's now, right? That isn't something that kind of gets loaned out for election day. No, thank you. We gave. Um, I can't imagine how much money this is, but somebody asked at one of the trainings last year, it was all of the Help America Vote Act, mm -hmm. which is some federal thing that happened a few mm -hmm. years ago, and mm -hmm. and it's got a lot, a lot of money has been spent on mm -hmm. that. And last you know, the, now we've got a perfectly good printer in a very nice carrying case that they said, well, we can lose, use it or we can donate it to another nonprofit. They just mm -hmm. don't want it back. Oh, okay. So we oh. have an extra printer when we need one. Huh. A little brother printer. It's not a copier, just uh -huh. a printer. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. A lot, lot of money for... You know, we used to have the vote by phone thing and nobody ever used it. Mm -hmm. Every year we'd have right. to pay the phone company to come and hook up the phone line in the mm -hmm. town hall. Nobody ever used it. Yeah. But yeah. we did it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we'll do this one too. And yeah. It's not... It doesn't go anywhere. It's not hooked up to any... We don't have internet connection okay. or anything. It's just it's just a way to, for people to put their ballot. At, they look on the screen and make their choices and put the ballot in the machine and it marks the ballot. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. And then, and then it gets put in the box? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So that's just another pain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I guess I'll be telling you if we need anything oh, else. Do you, what then, about the recording of the town meeting? Um, well, last year I didn't do it. I okay. just relied on that. that. And, that and I think that was fine. Because I never listened to those cassettes. Well, and we all could the years have been doing it. We could, I know how to use the digital uh, recorder now. Really? Ooh. Yeah. You know how to download it? I know how to download it. I can put it on a CD. Yeah. Wow. High tech. Yeah. Put that the whole four hours or whatever. Uh, or hours yeah, I, what I would do is you know, wipe out everything else that's on there. I don't think anything previous to the last two hearings that we've had are really need to be held onto for posterity. But, mm -hmm. And I have those downloaded and on CDs now. Um, wow. So... I guess the catch is that I probably would want to download it. Well, I guess I could download it at home and then get it onto a CD. Because um, I don't think the computers here would be able to download it. Really? You have to have some kind of sound, like a okay. you, your My laptop. laptop. Okay. okay. All right. So, I'll so you can download it right to a CD then? Yeah, yep. I'll I give it to Laura. So mm -hmm. in storage, yeah. Mm -hmm. can download it, yeah. Put it on the website? Yeah, so then you could have it on the... Uh, <laughs> Computer to to work up the minutes, or um, we could put it on a CD and yeah. and you could um, hook it up to your stereo at home and. Yeah. <laughs> or my, my Walkman. No. Yeah. Yeah. How old fashioned is that? Right. Yeah. Um, I think I'd rather watch the watch the video. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I, we don't have to use it if you. And we have to pay yeah. though. We usually. Mm -hmm. Pay, you know, I mean, less like 10 oh, so bucks or something, so and they give a, us a, a recorded video. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's what I've been doing for the archives. Actually, for doing the minutes, I can just look at it online. Okay. But to, to get something that's away. Yeah, all right. Then. I've so, been ordering it. so maybe we shouldn't worry about it then. Yeah. Okay. Well. Luckily, we have HCTV to yeah, be there to yeah. <laughs> record it for us. Yeah. So, right. mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. See you at town meeting. Yeah. Yes. Pre town. Not sooner. Pre town meeting, right. Yeah, don't let me forget that. So you'll send out a thing on Front Porch Forum? I will. And we'll put something on the website too, maybe? Oh, yeah, that's it. Okay. All right. Okay. And maybe, I guess we should probably do an official warning because there probably would be more than one select board member there. Yeah, it was, well, okay, but it's not a meeting where any business is going to No, I know, but um, just so that we should probably follow the open meeting laws. To, to you. Well, yeah, we pro we should just. Easy enough to post it. Oh, we, right. we probably never have. But. Right. I mean, I can do that. I can do the I actual. Post it. I mean, it's in the town report. It's okay. It's bulletin board. Well, no, it's not, but it's in the town report, and everybody has that. Okay, I guess that, that covers it. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Okay. So, um, the next thing on the agenda is uh, we could review the personnel policy if you want. I, what I basically did was um, I made the changes that we talked about last yep. week, um, or last time, I should say. And um, I just wanted us to go over those changes quickly, briefly, or, um, to make sure that, and then I'll, I'll you know, there's a copy. Um, this one is not good. That's the old one, yeah. The old one. <laughs> yeah that, that's the one that were, the things that we had talked about last time. Okay. Um, so, and I did, I think I did send this to both you and Paul. Okay, I didn't see that one on there yeah. yet. Yeah. But it's basically everything that we talked about. Yep. Um, yeah, so I did have a couple questions. So, that's, so maybe that would be part of... Um, so at the beginning, I just defined a full-time, yep. part-time employee of the town and put in the um, parts that were relevant to the town clerk and the town treasurer. Um, and then just a, a final thing at the end that any other part-time employees working less than 20 hours per week, um, you know, that, that they don't receive any of the benefits. Yep, just to spell it out that way. Yeah, yeah just to spell good. it out so there's no... No question. No question. Yeah. No confusion. Um, 
and then um, so like uh, under sick time um, basically you know with a prorating um, so it works out nicely for the part-time employees um, you know basing it on 20 hours it's just half of what the full-time employee would be but yeah with the town clerk and town treasurer they basically um, you know it's 54 hours um, would be um, what would come out for them so we could leave it at hours um, you know the, the stating it as a day there are fractions of time so you know whether we should just state it that they earned they you know would have earned the 60 hours, is, hours yeah the hours probably because it comes out yeah. yeah so yeah. that's just so we'll just cross out the days yeah. not even mention it um, okay that was one question that I had um, and then what I did, um, and this is something that we didn't discuss, but in the uh, criteria that's listed um, for this in this section for sick time, sick time um, part of it got into um, you know how it, how it would accrue and how many hours and all, which didn't really seem like it was criteria for being eligible. It was more just kind of defining, um, you know, better defining um, what sick time was. So I took away the items in the criteria listing, it were six, seven, and eight, and put them in a, a couple of sentences um, at the uh, kind of the introduction or the overview for the sick time. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I just want to make sure that, you know, that um, you and Paul are okay with that. It, did, it seemed clear that way. Maximum. Um, We've got a maximum on it, so that's, yeah, yeah so that's fine. And then, the, you know, this fact that if they don't accrue, if they don't use the accrued uh, sick time, um, that it's not going to be paid out to them at the... Yeah, they got a maximum number of six, of 240, yeah. so... So that was... So. Which is good. We didn't used to have that way back. Right. We got into... Yeah. Something. yeah. So then the, the criteria listing are basically what... Um, and that's pretty much boilerplate. Um, I, I do know... Um, that um, there was a change in the sick leave policy by state, the legislature last year. So I should probably, um, I think, check, I'll check with VLCT that I think that they would be willing to review this oh. once, once we have the revisions That'd be good. done. And there may be some other criteria for sick leave now, because I know there were some changes made in, by the legislature last, last session. Um, so and then the part time, the vacation time, I just kind of broke it down um, as we had talked about for your part time, 20 hours a week, the town clerk and town treasurer, 18 hours per week. Um, and then just kind of filled in that chart. Um, 30, um, yeah, so um, here was one question under personal, personal time. Um, so again, the full-time, part-time, you know, the part-time, um, it, it divides up pretty neatly from the yep. 24 hours to 12 hours. For the town clerk and the town treasurer, it turned out to be 10.8 hours of personal time. So I was wondering, you know, should we just round it up to 11? I would. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, um, and then, let's see, let's see here. It's 12. Uh, I did have a question at the end of, oh um, uh, yeah, um, so, let's see, let me get my bearings again. So for the overtime, um, there's a statement at the end of, of, you know, the qualifications for overtime where it says a full-time employee who is required to work on a state or federal holiday. Um, shall be compensated at a rate of one and a half times the employee's regular rate of pay in addition to their holiday pay. And then under the section for holidays, we have the same statement twice um, again. So I'm just wondering, um, should we keep the same statement under the um, uh, overtime pay plus the holiday, or should we just have it in one place? In some ways, it might be clearer to have it in both places. Um, 
it doesn't really matter to me, but I just had that question as I was putting it together um, with the changes. If it doesn't matter and it makes for better clarity, mm -hmm. the two places. That was, yeah. Yeah. That was my thinking too, yeah. Spells it right out that yeah. way better than guessing. Mm -hmm. And then I had a question also under holidays. Um, so Diane, I guess I can ask you this. When, when you guys, um, like say the Monday, the President's Day, was a holiday. Do you prorate that based on you know, the total hours, or is it just that the fact that that would be a day of work, so it would be six hours? Right, that's the way we do that. That's the way we do it, yeah. And then, you know, like if Laura got it, it would be based on the four hours that she would have worked. Well, we haven't exactly decided how to do that. Okay, all right. But that's what we've been doing so far. Mm -hmm. So it is for you, for you and um, Brandy, it is the six hour days. Okay. And that would be true also for the different holidays that don't fall on a work day. You would give you and Brandy would um, have always given yourself the six-hour day. Um, if it's not a Monday, it would be a four-hour day. Um, if it's a day we would ordinarily work. If it's a Friday holiday, we might take that as a floating. Okay. Take another day. So I don't remember what we're doing. Okay. Well, maybe when you know when Brandy's able, maybe you guys yeah. can figure that out and what yeah. what what, what you would like to see. Fourth of July this year is on a Saturday. Right. So right. if we had if Friday was a work day, we might take Friday off, but it's not. Yeah. And by Monday, we have to go back to work. So yeah. I don't know. But do you? Okay. Uh, Okay, anyway, that, I guess that was to be figured out at some point in the future. Yes, it gets pretty complicated. With well, the town clerk and the town treasurer, yeah. yeah. And then the, yeah. yeah. So I just made some changes in the listed holidays. Um, Washington's birthday is really President's Day. Yeah. Um, you added Martin Luther King's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. North, uh, um, and then the, we, um, the clause at the end, you know, there was a uh, designation that the day after Thanksgiving would also be a paid holiday, and that was pretty much so the road crew could go deer hunting. Um, yeah. And but sometimes they choose to do that and not, and and um, so for everyone else, it could be. We, we had talked about this of just having it be a floating holiday, and a person could choose whether to tag that onto Thanksgiving or or Christmas. Yeah. Um, so I just stated that that, um, that uh, one additional paid floating holiday associated with either Thanksgiving or Christmas, but not both. Yeah. So, okay. Um, not both. Yeah, that makes yeah. it clearer and it mm -hmm. gives them the option of picking one or the other. And then for the, in this next paragraph with the full-time employees, um, Full-time employees will receive holiday pay at the regular rate of pay and may count the holiday hours paid towards actual hours worked when determining overtime compensation. Um, and then um, for this, to include the part-time employees, part-time employees will receive prorated holiday pay at their regular rate of pay um, and may count holiday the holiday hours paid towards actual hours worked, um, which doesn't really, it's, that's kind of irrelevant for them because they, you know, that, that they don't really get overtime anyway, so um, I was just wondering. Um, so was, you may be able to just do away with that That phrase. second phrase, that's yeah. what I was thinking. That, um, and at the regular rate of pay. Yeah. yeah. So, there. so that, yeah, and that was, a, was kind of trying to mirror what they said for full time, but it didn't seem to really, it shouldn't matter for them anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just saw another town's policy that said that they only count actual hours worked toward overtime. So if somebody works 32 hours and then gets an eight hour paid holiday, then they don't get overtime if they come in another four hours on the weekend or whatever because that eight hours is holiday pay. It's not actual right. work. Yeah, and, th and this in our personnel policy, it, it mentioned it towards. Um, Let's see, there's one place where holiday pay, oh, the holiday pay, or holiday hours, I should say, um, don't apply towards um, towards overtime. Um, 
Oh, so that's kind of like that. Yeah. yeah, but it would, in this particular instance, the holiday hours do apply towards overtime um, if um, it's on a holiday. So let's say, um, yeah, and that is a little confusing as I start that's to think great. about it. So let, let's see, let me find out where that other spot was. Um, oh, is it under overtime? Yeah, um, so a full-time employee who is required to work on a state or federal holiday shall be compensated or, okay, in, addition, in addition to their holiday pay. So if they work on a holiday, um, then they get paid the eight hours for the holiday, mm -hmm. but they also get paid for the hours they're um, working. that they're working at, at a rate of time and a half, time and a half rate. Right, but if they took... <clears throat> Let's say it was Thanksgiving on Thursday. If they took that day off and they got their eight hours of holiday pay and then they got called in right. for eight hours on Friday, then it would not put them into overtime. Right. Even though they would be claiming 48 hours. Right. Yeah. That other if they didn't hours. work, if they didn't work on that day, right. They, right. they could only claim it as hours. Yeah. Oh, and they it, worked it. Yeah. And it would and it would count as hours towards the 40 hour week, which would then if they worked over that, it would. That's what this statement is saying here it's towards towards the holidays. Um, if a full-time employee is required to work on a state or federal holiday, um, they would be you know, compensated at time and a half rate um, in addition to their holiday pay, which would be straight, um, straight time. I mean, there, it wouldn't be time and a half. Right. Yeah. Okay. So they would get time and a half. For the work, for plus the, work. the eight hours for at, the at time the they didn't the, have to work. Yeah, at the regular hourly rate. So they would get double time and a half. Double time plus one half for the same eight hours, right? Yeah, I mean, let's say the eight hour day, that would be the holiday pay at the regular base rate of pay. And then if they worked however number of hours they worked, um, four, six, eight, you know, those hours would be um, t a time and a half. That's what this is saying here. Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, under, I think under the clause for sick time, there's a thing about, um, you know, I have to find it. Sick time it should be there. I guess, yeah, I think, I don't know where the other thing with the holiday time, I know if they, um, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm even looking for now, to be honest with you, so. I think the other policy said something like hours that are not physically worked, but claimed during that week, do not count toward determining overtime. Right. I think that, that is sense. is in our overtime part. Let me see if I can find that. Sick time. Disability. It's got to be on this page. Overtime holiday. Page 11 is overtime. Okay, great. B. Page 11. Okay, so. Three hours. Hey, Paul. Um, you to Paul. We're kind of going over the changes that I. Okay. And I have a. I didn't. Copy. But almost. I haven't got to grab any of the. Yep. I'm going to have a copy. Um, so yeah, I guess we don't have that in our somewhere. There was. Okay, the use of sick time, personal time, or vacation time do not count towards hours actually worked yes. towards overtime. So, okay, that's what I was trying to find. So where's that? Where are you on? Uh, page page 11, eleven, the overtime. Where um, Laura had brought up a comment that other towns um, that they don't count um, a holiday
chores. Over. So the way the state works, yeah. holidays count as time to actually work. Yeah. I don't care what we want to do with this. And that, that's what we have in our personal Holidays count as time to actually work. Yeah. Annual leave, vacation time counts as time actually worked. Mm -hmm. Personal time and comp time both count as time actually worked. The only time that doesn't count as time actually worked is sick time. Okay. So what happens if you work, you could take Monday off, say, use mm -hmm. vacation time, and then you could work overtime Tuesday to get the overtime rate. Okay. But if you if you work overtime eight hours, say you work four hours overtime Monday, four hours overtime Tuesday, and then Friday you called in sick for eight hours, that would lose straight yeah. would become straight time. Okay. So you exceeded the comp. Oh, you see how that works? Yep. Yeah. So that's how the state does. They just qualify what counts as time actually worked and what doesn't for computing okay. overtime. It's the easiest way to do it. Okay. Yeah. So in our personnel policy, sick time, personal time, or vacation time do not count. Do not. And that's fine. That's what they've been doing. Okay. I, I think it wasn't our intent to change a bunch right. of stuff. Yeah. It was just yeah. I do remember you mentioning that. Yeah. And I, was um, I think we have pretty much made our way through it. Were there, were there anything? I did have, and you know, and Brian and I had some questions that I typed in here that we kind of figured out, um, answered. Um, there's still some questions regarding the town clerk and town treasurer that they need to discuss, I guess, and um, come up with that. What they would like to see worded in there. Um, but, um, so I think we're, did you see? Did you get to see this um, before? I, I sent it out well, um, maybe a week or so ago. But I did read through this. Okay. Yeah. Was there anything that stood out? No. These are, what I basically was doing yep. was incorporating the yep. changes. That yeah, you did exactly. You just cross, and then when you're yeah. done, you just get rid of all the lines in okay. red. And all right. That way you can, it's easy when you review it, then you can see what was changed. Right. Yeah. So right at the moment, we um, you know the things that are that we still need are. Um, so we were going to take the day after Thanksgiving away. Was that the intent? No, it was. We created it in, into a, a a floating day. Um, Got it. Okay. All right. Let's see. Where Fair is? Enough. Let me find the page that that's. What page is? That know? was on uh, Here it 13th. Is. I got it. So, um, and do we have that discussion? Okay, yeah, okay. I'm remembering. Yeah, so the part in red after the listing of holidays, all full and part time employees and the town clerk and town treasurer shall receive, receive one additional paid floating uh, holiday associated with either Chris, Christmas or Thanksgiving, but not both. And they can use it any place they want. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Perfect. Yeah. So then, then I realized one of the things that I didn't make the changes on was the um, that, um, appendix B, but that pretty much just dress, addresses health insurance. Right, so full time, and you said yeah. full time. The yeah. That was our intent. So it looks like you did yeah. what we wanted. Yeah. So I think we've pretty much done what we wanted. The only thing that we're missing are the, the yeah, right. inf information from the town clerk and the town treasurer regarding their assistance and right. some information regarding themselves. Um, so um, we'll just, I think we'll just wait to, I could send this to the LCT for them to vet it for the changes that we've made um, without those changes and then those. And, and that might make sense. Yeah. Just so we know that we didn't do something illegal. Right. And then the parts, the parts that they're going to give us are basically just, um, you know, written information that will be a part of the personnel policy so that. Nothing so we'd, we'd have to worry about sending out to the no, SAT. No, no, I don't think so. So we can get this out. Yep. yep. So sure. that, that would take effect July 1st, correct? Yes, so that's what we're planning on. Yeah. So what about what's in there now? Did they get anything from this point where you guys have started reviewing it until um, July 1st? Well, you know, if they really wanted to make an issue of it, it's written in here that they do yeah. get things. Um, but it's been in, you know, since we ever we've had part-time employees for this last couple of years, um, it hasn't been done. It's, it's been an oversight. Um, Would it be easier to make it retroactively effective January 1st? We could do that. As, and then as fill a, in what's not done, just so this is clear that we're not, we don't have this area in limbo. Right. Between yeah. now and then, because we need, like, we can't fix the past. Right. I think yeah. we would just say that as of, this would be my thought, as of January, we'll, whenever it's approved, it'll be retroactive back to January 1st, mm -hmm. and we will accrue the whole year. Yeah. We will accrue time 
Yeah. And then it doesn't really matter when, it's just kind of goes back, kind of a good start date and right. they would start accruing their time in it. Yeah. Will it be January 1st or do you think the calendar? Where we could go back to the fiscal year if you wanted fiscal to. Fiscal year or whatever. That's, yeah. a, that's a set date too, that's another option. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. calculate their leave time back, I'm mm -hmm. okay with that too. Yeah. Whichever way it makes it easier for the bookkeeping, I guess. So right. Just well, to try to compensate a little bit for miss miss time, you know. Yeah, yeah. I would feel um, better about that. I mean, it was basically our oversight. Yeah. Um, so uh, J July first of nineteen is when it would yeah. go back. So to the beginning of fiscal year. Fiscal year. year FY twenty. Yeah. Fiscal year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would you like to make a motion? Sure, I'll make that, that as a motion. Okay. We will this. Uh, whenever this policy is approved, that it would be retroactive back to July 1st, 2019. And mm -hmm. we will have the town treasurer um, assign the uh, time, do those employees for that time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Aye. It's a date. We went back some. Yeah. We can't go back 10 years. But no. I'll, I guess no. they well, fortunately, we haven't had yeah whatever <laughs> part time. I mean, I, I think originally the word part time was put in. I think thinking a, of the town yeah. clerk and the town. It's a big update because at least it's, it's yeah. reflecting what we do, and it clearly delineates. Yeah, there's probably something in it that's not right, but we'll find it later. Yeah. The, <laughs> the last be a time, situation that comes up. <laughs> last time this was revised, we didn't have part time employees. Right, so I know it's uh, yeah, so uh, right yeah. time full time employees. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so that's the personnel policy. I, so what I'll do is I will rent out, you know, take the rent out of these um, and send it into person to VLCT to just have them re read it over. Um, they may charge us a small fee for doing that. That's okay. I think it's worth it. It's that way yeah, we just yeah. don't aren't making a yeah. you know, unintended error. Right. Yeah. And, um, and then we'll, we'll get it back. So we'll, we'll say, don't do that. That's illegal. It's okay. So we'll get back a vetted copy, and then we will um, we will uh, formally adopt it um, then. But one of the other things that I can't do on my computer, and maybe Laura in the future when, when we get there, um, these headings at the top of the personnel policy where it says policy title and issued by and the date and the revision. Those. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can't do that on my computer. However, Skip set it up. Um, Should be a um, I don't know how to the do header. that. It's in the header, so we just have to, maybe it's locked. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's do you have a digital copy of it? Yes. You can send it to me. Yeah, I can send it to you. Yeah. And we don't really need to worry about it until we actually um, approve the, you know, formally adopt the, the changes. Mm -hmm. But you can play around and see. Figure out how to do it. <laughs> skip, and you know, if we don't can't figure it out, um, yeah. I bet Skip Lindsay could tell us how. Cause he, or he just copy and create a new template. We could, we could, just, yeah. Right, and then you have it. If it's locked, I, I can't yeah. imagine it's locked. It's probably just something to do with whatever version of software you have. Yeah. And it could be protected by the It could be, yeah, it could be, yeah. Okay, so um, next on our agenda is um, this town highway stuff um, report. Um, and just to bring you up to date on what's happened, Kim was here, so we I did. saw him, but I didn't talk to her. Yeah, we um, we're gonna kind of still kind of researching what to do with about the nuisance this. dog. Yeah, yeah, and um, and we'll probably be reviewing and rewriting the ordinance okay. in, in the future. Yeah. So we'll have a better sense of what to do at the next select board meeting. I think. Um, Brandy's not here. When Diana was here, we pretty much talked, mostly talked about town meeting. Okay. Um, We've struggled meeting. with that domestic dog issue yeah, forever. Yeah, forever. It's going Would to be VLCT issue. have a model? They do have a model. Yep. Maybe and that's also, something that we could, yeah. yeah. The biggest problem is the, the remedies. Yeah. yeah. That's and the force problem. Is like remedies and force force So when yeah. we get into remedies, you know, we can order and, and say, go get the dogs. I don't want to see anybody getting shot or beat up over yeah you know yeah. that's what happens with this and that's where it kind of falls down the same thing with health issues it's like mm -hmm. when everyone cooperates works but if you get somebody that doesn't want to yeah. cooperate it can get ugly fast yeah, yeah. yeah. and do the police want to get involved how i don't know what to do yeah now. it's tough with little towns because mm -hmm. yeah our resources are, are thin and pretty everybody's good. a neighbor and yeah Right, and, and yeah. they don't have a town. <coughs> we don't have our own police department. Yeah. Which, yeah. You got to wait for state police. If they don't want to show up, you got issues. Yeah. You got to hire the sheriff to come. And again, what level are we going to carry this to? Yeah, it's hard to make laws we can't enforce. Right. right. Yeah, it's yeah, it's 
Yeah. It's a so concept. We can make decrees at some point. It gets willing to have someone get shot over this. Yeah. <laughs> if it gets ugly, yeah. I don't really answer that. Yeah. yeah. So moving on to the town highway report, I just want to state that uh, we did get the um, the document or determination of what it's called findings, conclusions, and um, determination. I think decision. Yeah from uh, our town lawyer. Um, I reviewed it, I um, made some suggested changes um, and then um, talked to the lawyer about those, um, which he was fine with. Um, we will review that um, document in executive session. That's what okay. executive session is for. Um, and there were also, um, he had some questions about the uh, survey report um, which I also looked at and um, did a little bit of town vault um, research on. And so there, there are a couple of changes in the survey report that the surveyor um, is going to um, make uh, with no charge. Okay. <coughs> so um, so we'll, we'll deal with that more in executive session. Um, um, last meeting, you know, there was a question again about the banks and the village. Um, so I talked to Greg about it um, and he mentioned that um, uh, he, th he thought that some of the bank buildup was being done by um, Richard Patton. Um, I was never able to get a hold of Richard but um, and then there was an email from the folks that live in what used to be the store about the banks also and the narrowness of the road. Um, That's in between them and their building? Yeah. Because unfortunately when he cleaned, he didn't clean that area, so if they get a chance to come back, they need to scoop it's, that side. Well, the there's back. an issue there, um, and which we'll talk about, but um, yeah, so what Greg is asking is, um, you know, that when there is an issue with the banks building up, you know, let the road crew deal with it and, and maybe have everybody else who's doing stuff there not do it because um, sometimes it, what's done makes it hard for the road crew to deal with it um, especially with our this thawing and freezing like, right the know, banks get hard yeah they get hard um, so he's he's requesting that if there's an issue if anybody has an issue to give the road crew a call and okay. they'll come down with a bucket loader and and deal with it um, so and then the, the issue that I feel is you know with the, the um, People that are living in what used to be the store, our last rendition of the store, the agreement with them is that they park on one side of the, the two cars, drive. right? Yeah, two cars. Th a third car can park in, t in front of the town hall, and then they have space for the fourth car out behind. Um, but the problem with them is, you know, that they're so they're parked there, and that's basically their driveway. They're responsible for taking care of that space. What they sometimes do is. You know they'll park on the other side, and then they expect the road crew to come and clear in front of their building. In front of their building. Right. What I was addressing was they could. We've always cleaned up to the island. Right. And that could be cleaned out. There's yeah. probably three or four feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Is it just okay. clean? If he moves over and just takes a bucket with right. out of, up to where the island curb is, mm -hmm. I think we should clean that. Okay. okay. I agree. If we're not going to clean it again, that's fine. But right. for, you know the width of a car, or whatever it is, eight feet from that mm -hmm. eight feet to the. Um, so one right. curve, curve width. we yeah, should be keeping that just really narrow. It makes it tough for us to get in okay. there too. Okay, all right. So I know, um, you know, once the problem is we're behind now, so it's frozen. So it's it frozen. Yeah. Tough, but yeah. If you can clean some of that off, it'll melt sooner. Okay. Because of the yeah. So maybe with this warm weather, yeah. that they, they would be able to do that. Okay. Um, so basically, you know, <clears throat> as far as the winter roads, um, you know, the roads are in pretty good shape now. For where now, where yeah. things are getting warm, um, and then they're going to freeze. So yeah, this weekend's going to be cold again. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I think they are going to get out with a greater a little bit of uh, before things freeze up too oh, solid. So we'll have to grind those banks back way yeah. down because the mud season is going to come in shortly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's hard so, to believe, but soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, we'll see what the weather brings us, but. And then there's something that's come up. Um, uh, there is a grader, East Montpelier has a grader, um, that they have, they're basically trading it in um, for a new grader. Um, and so they, they have kind of made the trade already, but they're, they're still using the grader because they're waiting for parts for the new one. Um, $70,000 for this grader. Um, the Greg and Grizz did go down and look at it. Um, 
Greg talked to me briefly about it this afternoon and has talked to Brian about it. Um, it's, there it is, you know. Um, kind of fills the bill for what we need. It's yeah. four-wheel drive, bigger, bigger than what we've got. Yeah. So what to John would we each? So, so we would either need to sell ours outright or yeah. trade it. Have they have already traded it to the dealer? They they have traded it to the dealer. So, so we, um, what kind of a deal? Have they looked at what the dealer would give us? Haven't we haven't done that yet. Um, well, we could ask Greg to do that and yeah. see what see what we could get for trade in for our old. The question is, someone is mentioning about the John Deere graders needing transmission rebuilds. So that's what um, Greg has a mentioned. Certain number of hours. I don't know this, what that is. This one does need that. So we would want that do done that. before, yeah. Yeah. whether the 70 included the rebuild or... No, the 70 would not include that. What, what Greg, you know, what Greg and Grizz looking at it, they have a rough estimate that, you know, they, they would need the, the transmission rebuild. It also needs, would need new tires all the way around. So Greg is figuring, you know, <coughs> a, a guesstimate is that it would cost us um, to have the grader back in shape to, to be used. It would cost between the purchase of it and, and repairing it, um, $130,000. Okay, yeah. Which is less than half of what a new grader would cost. Um, and then we've got ours to sell. Yeah, and then right, we so would have ours. Big part of that decision is what our graders work. Yeah. You put tires on it, it's got to have some value. Yeah, yeah, it does have some value. Um, a number of years ago, I'm not sure how many, but um, there was you know, research looked into for what we would get for the grader. And Greg is remembering that there was a price of $30,000 at for tree. So what it would be now, um, you know, but we could, um, you know, he, he could contact Nordtrax, Trax, or Nordtrax? Yeah, I'm not sure how they do, how they do it. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, he should look into several places or whatever and see what, what kind of value it has. Yep. Sure, and we, I wonder what kind of a, we could get a inspection done on it by somebody the mm -hmm. potential graders okay. to determine if there's other other things yeah. expenses that might you know just so you know what you're buying. Yeah. You yeah. know a couple of tires in the transmission. Is there? Yeah. yeah. You know, if they have a, a, an equipment inspector or right. the dealer yeah. would be willing to give us a. Tires and transmissions covers just about everything but the yeah. motor. <laughs> yeah, I just don't, I'm not yeah. familiar with the, the graders yeah. and their joints. Are there swing yeah. things with bushes? There, there are a lot of things, things that might. Oh, yeah, you're going to think about the $50,000 swing <laughs> arm job you're going to need next year. <laughs> right. I mean, with uh, Greg and Grizz looking at it, they, you know, they did note there was some hydraulic lines that, uh, that were leaking a little bit. Normal when someone's getting so, rid of it, there's a reason broken. they're getting rid of it. Yeah, well the reason they're... they're yeah, there's there's they're time for major service, yeah. Yeah, the, the transmission is the reason. In fact, they, they, people at these and these smart player um, told me like that, that, you know, they, yeah, so we knew it was due for the yeah. transmission. So Just so you know what you're buying and you can make yeah. a proper decision. Yeah, yeah, okay. I hope the dealer could do that for us and yeah. that's the list of... Well, so I could mention to Greg that we are just need more players. information just to need consider, more, consider yeah. it. You know what? Yeah. What's the other one where, um, and we would like an inspection to know yeah. what other things, mm -hmm. since I know nothing about wear and tear on the grader. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So I'll have them proceed with that, and we'll yeah. see. Just need more info. Yeah. There are a couple other towns that I've been told have yeah. been yeah. Yeah. looked into it too, but mm -hmm. we'll, we'll keep at it until. Um, and then we'll just take a look at our piggy bank and just see how, how we might work on the horizon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We don't want to destroy all our tax savings we created this year. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's pretty much it for the town highway um, work. Um, yeah. We do have a, just a quick update um, for the village stormwater um, final design plan. Um, the RFP for the final designs has been has gone out. So um, and there goes a timeline, just so that we have a sense of how this will all happen. Um, and this is all going to be pretty much overseen by the Central Vermont Regional Planning okay. Commission. We'll we'll be active with it, but um, it's it's not under us to worry about okay. and manage. Yep. Um, so. Essentially, um, you know, the RFP is out. Um, the deadline is the end of February, which is this week um, for the submission of questions, and then um, 
The proposals are due on March 24th, um, and then um, the contractors will be notified in early April, second week of April. Um, they'd start the work the second week of May, and the contract completion date is uh, June 30th. So um, by the end, you know, by this summer, by the end of the fiscal year, basically. Um, those full designs will be completed. Um, then, of course, you know, then there's a whole the process with the full designs is that then we have all the information we need to, again, submit um, for grants for the implement, oh, implementation. Okay. So, and I don't know, that time frame will be, you know, a, yeah, a few knows, years yeah. also. Yeah. So, um, I'm hoping that maybe <coughs> In this process of um, uh, them putting together the full designs, that the, you know, the people doing the actual work will actually be taking a look in the village, and, and maybe that we can pick their brain a little bit about the the road work that we want to have done. Yeah, because I've, I've actually reached out to a couple of engineers mm -hmm. about getting us a design on the road, and I haven't heard back. I hope okay. we have a, have an estimate of what that would cost okay. today, but I have to. Nobody's yeah, back okay. to me, so yeah. and then I got called out by two thirty. So if there's anything on there, yeah, we'll know. yeah. So that's pretty much it for that. Um, and you, you had mentioned that the rail trail committee was going to meet, but the meeting <coughs> canceled. Yeah, so canceled. so, so night for something. Okay, yeah. all right. So um, and I haven't heard anything more yet. Yeah. Next meeting. Okay. So um, you know, after town meeting, if you have a sense of the people that are are on that. Yeah. Committee, we can officially uh, appoint them. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll do we that. Kind of just a, yeah. just an official thing to do. Um, so at this point, um, I'd like to make a motion that we um, go into executive session, uh, citing one VSA section three thirteen A one E um, to take up some pending or probable uh, civil litigation. Um, Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So at 7.40, 22. 22, yep.